contemplate self-destruction. Yeah, working with Josh was, I, I would say, a no-brainer when we were going to uh, into album number two. Uh, we were pleased with what he did on the first record, and knowing that there was a six-year gap in between, and hearing all the records that he's done in between those albums, uh, the, the the quality the, of the, the sonic quality just got bigger and better with every album that we heard him be a part of. Um, he's a fun dude to be with, and that's important. Um, and the very few times that we needed a fifth member to kind of chime in with a a, a tiebreaker on a, on a, on a, on a dilemma. Um, we all trust Josh a lot and respect him, so whatever he would, if, if he had a, an opinion or a thought one way or the other, it was, uh, was easy to trust him. Um, but personally, and probably speaking for all three of, three of the vocalists in the band, he, uh, he really hones in on, on vocals and, and he won't really settle for what he feels would be just, just a really good take. Once you hit a really good take, he's like, just do it one more time, you can do it better. And, uh, so besides the four of us in the band, Josh was right there and it was like five guys all just on the same team, just not stopping until everyone was super stoked. So he has uh, enthusiasm. I'm a big fan of that. So the artwork for this record did come together um, when, the, when the album was finished because we wanted something to represent what we felt was the album, whereas the first record was just self-titled uh, this one was going to be titled Reluctant Hero. And we kind of got together and Max started the conversation with us of like, to me that sounds something uh, like a statue. It kind of uh, can represent anything, but it's, it's stoic and it will live forever. And um, we all started chiming in on what that statue type image could be. And uh, Max had seen this uh, Hasserot angel that's in a cemetery in Ohio, and he said, this is the image that, that seems to marry the, the lyrics and the idea behind Reluctant Hero as an album. It was a simple statue that had this oxidization that looked like black tears, like the statue was crying. But it was very stoic, uh, with hands resting on a, on a sword into the ground. And it seemed like, when you looked at it, the statue was very, uh, it was a little haunting, but it was also very warming and welcoming, so you weren't frightened. Um, and it seemed to say like, hey, my work is done, and what I've done will live forever. That's the way we saw this angel. And uh, we went, we, we, we had some photographs taken of this statue up in Ohio, and had uh, Marcelo render it up into what would become the album. Cover. I think once one person gets an idea, like uh, if, we're, if we're trying to figure out who sings where, it's usually we take it on a song by song basis and the, whoever has the, the first idea that's the most passionate about a part, like you know, Max will be like, oh I want, I got something for this bridge, or I got something for this verse, or I'll say it, or Charles said, the first person that gets it, that kind of unlocks the rest of the song. Right? Like if I have a verse, then it's like, well, I'm obviously not going to do, you know, the next part. So the next part's going to be Troy or Max. And then Max like, that's cool. I got an idea. And then it, we start to, it's like a puzzle starts to come together. Yeah, I'm also in, inclined into, I, lo I love the idea of sometimes uh, the riff. If I have a very Max trash riff, I don't want to sing on it. Because that what everybody is obvious. expecting, you know, right. like it would be easy for me. It would be the, like, I do this every day. You know, it would have been cool, but what about if Troy sings on that trash riff or Greg sings on that, you know, and then I think that kind of, it's, it's kind of part of the, of kind of, you know, I, it's, it's kind of cheesy to call it magic, but I don't, I don't have another word for it. It's fucking pure magic, like the first record. And that, it teaches you something as a singer too, when you hear someone do something that's different than you would have done. Like if you sing over a part that I already had in my head, a phrasing for if Troy sings something over a part that I already had a phrasing for and I hear what he did and it's completely different than what you I would have done or you would have done right. it's like oh shit like that's cool like you, you kind of like learn something from what the other person did like you absorb it a little bit and that that one was cool the, the, on the first record because me and Greg work it you know we, we started Greg actually called me to start KBK and I was like 
that would be sick. Let's you know, let, let's do it. So we did a couple of demos together. We did Face Down. Uh, there was like a four song demo. And then, but I think the coolest thing was when we went to the studio and we had all the music, but nobody had seen one fucking word. It was yeah. all music, you know. Yeah. We had the whole record, the whole music was done. And then once we started, I mean, the, the first day we sang something, I think it was like, whoa. Yeah, that was pretty magical. We discovered this is what this band has it, that like a lot of other bands don't have it. It's this crazy combination that shouldn't fucking work. The Linger, Soulfly, Sepultura, Mastodon together is like, should not work. Yeah. But it does, man. It's fucking cool. And I think that the second record is that a thousand times better. Like now we know more what to do, what to expect. And even going to, to the unknown, like songs that stuff we never did before, you know, like the intro of... of um, I think we're more confident. With like, yeah, like you said, taking a cho taking a chance or doing something uh, that requires us to go out of our comfort zone a little bit more. Yeah, like yeah. We're more we're more into that. We're the first record. I think we're like, oh, you're like, here's what I bring to the thing, you know. And you're like, here's what I bring to the thing. And this time, I think we were willing to really like take down all the boundary, any kind of boundary or wall, and, and really get messy with it all. And like, you know, yeah, go out and, and go out of the, the get lost and try to find your way back. And the result is is amazing. I mean, like, to me, the most surprising thing of the new record is Greg's guitar playing, which is fucking f amazing. Like, he does all the solos on it, and I was like, where did that came from? That wasn't there in the first record, man, you know? And, uh, and that's cool. That kind of shows me also, like, there's no barriers, you know? Like, you, you put barriers on yourself if you want to. Like, he went out and, and applied him to the instrument, and the, st the shit he did is it's fucking killer, man. Thanks. You know, yeah, it's awesome. For real. Like, sometimes I, I struggle trying to get somebody to do, like, one bar of that, you know. And uh, he just came out with it out of nowhere. It was, it's, it, was, it was really cool. Like, the whole record is very organic like that. The shit just came out naturally like that. It wasn't forced. I, I think that's the problem sometimes with band. They try to force something that's not working and you keep forcing and it, it sounds fucked up and it didn't happen like that it's naturally came out fucking amazing you know so i, I couldn't be more pleased with this one.